We're here together on this day, representing and celebrating with people here and all over the world. Because there is a way to put an end to the unnecessary suffering that is brought down on a daily basis to the masses of people, not just in this country, but all over the world. Welcome to the RNL Revolution Nothing Less show. This is episode number 51 on May 6, 2021. My name is Andy Z. I'm the host of the show, and I'm coming to you from Los Angeles, California. The show opened with Michelle Chai, a leader of the Revolution Club here in Los Angeles, welcoming people to Revolutionary Internationalist May 1st, 2021. And I'm Sansara Taylor. I'm the co-host of the RNL show. And today's episode is going to revolve around and bring alive what Michelle talked about at the opening of this show. Andy is going to start us off by situating us in the moment described in a declaration, a call to get organized now for a real revolution that was issued by the Revcoms in early April. This will be followed by a film segment of a speech given by Bob Avakian that brings alive very vividly what the new society could be like after a revolution, the kind of liberation that's possible. That'll be followed by, we'll bring you a segment that brings alive and tells the story of what the Revcoms did, stepping out with revolution this May 1st, 2021, with gatherings here in Los Angeles and around the country, and that's gonna be pretty exciting, so we'll, we'll bring you footage from that later. And finally, at the close of our show, we're gonna have a crucial segment from Andy again, going into what we need to do now to advance this revolution, to seize on this rare moment that we're in. He's gonna draw from and do a close read of what is in this declaration and call from the Revcoms, and he's gonna bring alive a battle plan for the next several weeks for how we make, this, make advances in this now. So before I throw it to Andy to get us started, I wanted to quote directly from this declaration and call to situate us in this moment and to set up what he's gonna talk about. It says, quote, revolutions are not possible all the time, but are generally possible only in rare times and circumstances, especially in a country as powerful as this. This is one of those rare times and circumstances. This declaration goes on to make the point that while the situation we face could lead to something very terrible, quote, it is also possible that we could wrench something really positive out of it. Revolution, to put an end to this system and bring something much better into being, end quote. So with that, let's go to Andy. Possibility, a rare possibility, when something could happen when normally it does not. Possibility, when there is a chance for fundamental change. Possibility when what we've dreamed of, what we've worked for, could break through and actually be born. That is a moment to grab hold of. And especially so when the possibility is one that holds the potential to overthrow and break the back of this capitalist imperialist system that oppresses and exploits people all over the world through a real revolution to be able to go to work in a new society to bring about the freedom, the emancipation, of all humanity. That possibility is as precious as it is huge. Such a possibility, such an opportunity comes with a responsibility to each and every one of us to bend every fiber of our being, every synapse of our brain, to work together to seize such a time. I want you to keep in mind a few points that I'm going to highlight from a declaration, a call to get organized now for an actual revolution as we go through this episode, number 51, of the RNL Revolution Nothing Less show. First, there is a way to a world and a future that is worth living and is worth fighting for right now. Revolution, a real revolution, not playing around with the few changes that leave this system in place and in power while benefiting only a small number, end quote. And also, I want to repeat what Sansara read. Quote, revolutions are not possible all the time, but are generally possible only in rare times and circumstances, especially in a powerful country like this. This is one of those rare times and circumstances. 
And last, we cannot afford to waste these rare times and circumstances that could be ripened into a real chance to make revolution. This is the theme. This is the charge of this episode and more. This is the mission and ongoing charge of the RNL show. But to seize the possibility that is before us now, the possibility we have worked for and dreamed of, depends a great deal on the work that all of us need to do. First of all, to really get into and get with the leadership we have in Baba Veki and BA and the new communism he has developed. And whether the potential in the situation we face could develop into a real revolution depends on the struggle we wage with masses of people right now. We, which includes the Revcoms and all of you who are seeing this show, as well as many, many more people going to work now to impact society everywhere with this revolution and this leadership. We have to set ourselves to organizing thousands of people into the revolution while influencing millions to be favorable to this revolution so that when the time comes to actually make a revolution, millions could be led to go for it all out with a real chance to win. Later in today's episode, I'm going to work with you to dig further into the Declaration and what it says about how to do this. But first, what kind of world are we fighting for? To give a picture of this, we want to show you Bob Avakian from his 2003 speech, Revolution, why it's necessary, why it's possible, and what it's all about in a film clip titled, Imagine a New Society. The first great step or great leap on the road to communism is seizing power from the capitalists. Without that, none of this is, none of this is possible. But seizing power from them opens the way to making the advance to communism. Socialism is the new society established after the seizure of power. Socialism is three things, a new economic system, a new political system, and a transition to the final goal of communism. Let's talk about what this will make possible right away once power has been seized. Let's talk about the whole different nature of socialism as a society in which the masses of people are digging up the old, rotten, and putrid soil of capitalism and moving forward to the goal of a communist world. Let's imagine in healthcare, Instead of going to a doctor or a hospital if you can afford it, being insulted from the time you get there, being treated as if you don't belong there, being talked down to and acted as if you don't even understand your own body and your own health conditions, being discriminated against if you're a certain nationality or if you're a woman, being treated like you're maybe not sophisticated to understand what's really going on here. Instead of being told, we're sorry, you need a treatment, but you don't have the money to pay for it. Imagine if because we had a whole different society where the wealth were not only created, but were controlled and managed by the people, health care for basic necessities were free, and health care for everything else were very cheap. And if you couldn't pay it right away, they let you pay it over time. And imagine more than that if you went to the hospital and the staff and not just the nurses, but even the doctors sat down with you and treated you like a human being and said, tell me about... And if they didn't, other people there would get on them and say, what's wrong with you? That's the old way things used to be. We got a new way here. Imagine if they asked you about your history or about your children and what your concerns were. Imagine if they thought your opinion and your view of things and your understanding of things actually mattered. But let's imagine more than that. Imagine if people like you from the neighborhood were part of a committee together with the staff and the doctors and the administrators who actually ran the, the hospitals and the health care clinics. And your opinion when your input was drawn on all the time. Imagine if the doctors actually got together with the staff people and discussed things from their point of view. What are you seeing about how this hospital could be run better? How can we give better care to the patients? How can we take better care of people's needs? 
Let's talk about work. Imagine, first of all, that you actually wanted to go to work. <laughs> Imagine instead of being treated like, basically like an animal, being bossed around, treated as if you, you know, all you were there for was to bend your back, but you had no idea about how things ought to be, that you couldn't contribute anything, that you had no ideas that were worth anything, that you were just always trying to get out of everything and get, do as little as you could, which of course you are under the capitalist system. <laughs> but imagine if the conditions were changed so that, that weren't what you were doing. Imagine if you wanted to contribute. Imagine if your opinion were actually valued. Imagine if the character of work changed. Imagine if you knew when you produced something that it was for the good of the people, that it was helping the people's health needs or their needs for housing or their needs for textbooks for education that really told the truth. Imagine if besides that you were actually drawn into the administration of the place where you worked, if people like you chose representatives to be part of the committee running that place, together with the people who more full-time administered and the managers. Imagine if the administrators and the manager actually came down and worked with you some hours during the week and talked with you and saw the situation from where you were. Imagine if you held discussions where you worked and larger discussions among representatives of people about what was all this work for? What are we producing this for? How is this going to help the people in society? How can we support the struggle of the people throughout the world better through what we're producing through our work? Imagine if that were what work is like. That was Bob Avakian from his 2003 speech, Revolution, why it's necessary, why it's possible, and what it's all about, bringing alive just a sense of what a new society would be like. Since that time, he's gone on to write a constitution for the New Socialist Republic in North America, a concrete blueprint for that new society. It's available at revcom.us, and we highly recommend that you go and dig into it. So now we're going to turn to revolutionary internationalist May Day 2021. The Revcoms held important celebrations this past Saturday for Revolutionary May Day. These celebrations were about revolution, nothing less. And while we've said those words before, and we've worked to make that real, these celebrations were filled with the spirit and determination to rise to this moment, inspired by and guided by the leadership that we have. We have to recognize the potential within the sharply opposed experience of just this last year. Think about it. To give just a sense of this, we saw millions in the streets rising up against police murder and the oppression of black people on the one hand. And on the other hand, we witnessed a fascist coup attempt May 1st was about stepping into this moment and advancing the fight to make this our time and to make the future a bright future, not a dark future that it could be. And these were really beautiful gatherings that took place around the country. And we had great footage, and our team did a lot of work to sift through it and put it together to, for you to bring alive, for those of you who were there, a fuller sense of what you were a part of, and for those of you who weren't there, to invite you into this and be part of going forward off of this beginning launch pad. So let's go to that now. Revolutionary Internationalist, May Day 2021. The Revcom step out and people begin to step in. Saturday, May 1st, marked something not seen in a long time in this country. Over 300 people nationally in Los Angeles, New York City, Chicago, and a few other cities came together under the banner of revolution to declare, we are human beings. We refuse to accept slavery in any form and to learn about and get organized for an actual revolution to put an end to this system a launching pad and taking up the orientation in the recently issued a declaration 
a call to get organized now for a real revolution from the Revcoms. In Los Angeles, around 100 people gathered in a South Central neighborhood where the lives of the basic masses are all too often lives of agony, desperation, and hopelessness. Michelle Chai, a leader in the LA Revolution Club, welcomed all. Hey, so I want to start the program first and foremost by saying happy International Revolutionary May Day. That's right. So look, we're here together on this day, representing and celebrating with people here and all over the world. Because there is a way to put an end to the unnecessary suffering that is brought down on a daily basis to the masses of people, not just in this country, but all over the world. So look, we're all here in a very crucial moment. All of us. A lot of you responded to that call and declaration that said to all those people that can't stand living in a world where people are treated as less than human, that want to see a whole different world, and felt very deeply, and including many people, we heard as we were out in different neighborhoods and different parts of Los Angeles, talking to people about why it would matter to come here today. People told us they're hunting us down. This was young people that haven't even reached 18 that were telling us this, these things. They're growing up in a world and they're seeing these things. And they're seeing the murder after murder of people. And they're tired of it. And this is why we're here. People answering this call and this declaration to get organized now for an actual revolution to actually put an end to this. We have a particular responsibility living here in the US. If people got organized for revolution and brought down this whole system and gave people around the world hope that we don't have to live this way, it would change things radically. People all over the world would be inspired to do the same and to bring about a whole different world. At the heart of the programs, people experienced BA's leadership directly. People watched excerpts of why we need an actual revolution and how we could really make revolution and other speeches from Bob Avakian and got their hands on his talks and writings. Speakers brought out vividly why they are followers of BA and why everyone who wants to get humanity free from all this madness need to become followers of BA too. Look, this is somebody, a leader, that this country has not seen and the world has not seen, right? That has brought forward a real way to how to understand the world, how to change it. He has such a deep love for the people and speaks to people just like me, who before I came into this revolution were told that we ain't shit, that we can't rise up to, to become anything. And when I heard him speak, and he said that those people that have been told their whole lives that all they deserve is a bullet in their brain and a boot up their ass, can, be, can actually, can be and need to be a crucial part in making revolution and actually, you know, getting into this and becoming leaders in this revolution. Speaking very simply with a lot of heart and with a lot of love for the people and a lot of anger because he understands that this doesn't have to be this way and there is a way to change this. We say on our website, revcom.us, there's never been a leader like Bob Avakian in this country and there's no other leader in the world today like him. That's a bold statement. And it's true. Now, when I say this, I often hear back from people, wait a minute, Carl. What about Malcolm X? What about Huey Newton and Bobby Seale, other leaders of the Black Panther Party? What about them? You saying they ain't like him? Well, no, they were not like him. 
And look, I say that as somebody who was greatly inspired by Malcolm X, by Huey Newton, Bobby Seale, and the other leaders of the Black Panther Party, who learned a lot from them. But you gonna make a revolution, there's some questions you gotta break through on and some obstacles you gotta overcome. How are you gonna deal with all the power that this system brings down on you if you try to make a revolution, if you try to stand up and do anything? Who are the people who are gonna make this revolution? How are you gonna bring them together? What kind of world and society are you gonna bring into being after you make this revolution? And how are you gonna make sure that the revolution don't get turned back, don't get overthrown, and then people are back to suffering all the same shit that they wanted to get rid of through trying to make revolution? Malcolm X, for all his courage and determination, the leaders of the Black Panther Party, for all of their courage and determination, were never able to answer those questions. And, and I ain't blaming them for all that, because I know how Malcolm got cut down as he was still in development. I know how they came at the Black Panther Party with everything they had, but they never were able to answer those questions. Bob Avakian has answered those questions and more. He had people like saying, wait, hey, you shouldn't like listen. To anybody like white trying to tell you about like black people, black the struggle of like black people, whatever, and shit like that. But it all, but, but then, but that begs the question, that begs, that begs the central like question. What, is it true or not? Is, is what anybody like say, is it true or not? Does it reflect reality? Or is what Bob of his analysis of the, uh, of the situation, the conditions of black people, and he applied this same method to everything. Did it reflect reality or not? That was the key issue. Not who like said it or whatever, what their race was or their gender or whatever, but it does it, was it scientific? Because if it's scientific, we can get to the root of the problem and begin like to dig it out. And when I began to, to see that and understand that, it changed me. It changed, because before that, before, before I, I had did that, I really didn't give a fuck about like what happened, whether I lived or died. If I live five more minutes, I said, it's gonna be on my turn, and fuck it, which would have been on the terms of this system, because that hope for revolution, it wasn't there anymore. But, but it was, when I started to engage BA, I could see not only that we had could have like hope, but we really could like do this. Cause we had like a method and approach that was really like science, that's really is scientific. That we can take up ourselves and become, then we can take up ourselves the same way that Bob Avakian does and use it and utilize it to emancipate not only ourselves, but all humanity. This is the difference that that had like made. Yeah. Once I did that, I couldn't wait to get out of prison. Once I, you know, met Bob Avakian and started like reading and studying stuff, I could not wait to get, I was in a hurry to get out of prison. You know, cause I wanted to meet him. I wanted to learn from him. I wanted to get with the Revolutionary Communist Party. I wanted to get like with all of this here. In Los Angeles and New York City, new people stepped forward in powerful ceremonies to put on the BA Speaks Revolution Nothing Less t-shirts. They pledged to strive to live by, defend, and promote the points of attention for the revolution. Noche Diaz and others from the Revolution Club spoke about what this is part of. When we say we are human beings, we are human beings. That is not just an empty slogan. That is going up against everything about the way this world is. And it has everything to do with the world we're fighting to bring into being. We are human beings and we refuse to accept slavery in any form. When you step into the revolution, not only do you learn not to degrade other people, you learn to reclaim your humanity as part of fighting to liberate all of humanity. 
You learn to go up against all the me first. I, I, I way of thinking that keeps this whole thing going. And you learn to put humanity first and the whole world first. When you step into the revolution and put on one of these shirts, you learn that women, men, differently gendered people with different sexual orientations can be equals and all have a shared humanity. When you put on this shirt and you step into the revolution, instead of all this America first, thinking that people in other parts of the world and other countries don't matter, you learn to see people from different nationalities who speak different languages as equal human beings and as equals and comrades. When you put on this shirt and you step into the revolution, instead of going along with this system's way, when you're born into this mess and growing up and thinking, well, if this is the world we got, then we gotta get whatever we can while we're in it. Even if that means fighting and killing people just like you in the next block or in the next set and in the next neighborhood. Instead of all that, you learn that you are no less capable of a human being and you can be part of fighting to end all oppression and emancipate humanity. Yeah. There is something to live for and when necessary, die for, and it's not going along with this system. It's not putting up with its outrages and it's not trying to do for yourself. It's in doing everything we can to make a revolution to get this system off of everybody's backs and to actually create a future worth living, not just for ourselves, but again, for the future of humanity. When you have a force that's out and fighting for these points of attention of the revolution, you are also showing people the vision of society that we are bringing into being and you're breaking down the myth that people can never change and the world can never change. It can and we must. The other... All right. And the Revolution Club. We are getting organized for a real revolution. Let me be clear by what I mean by a real revolution. I mean nothing less than bringing down overthrowing, dismantling this system, all of its forms of repression, of violence, and its institutions that hold the people down, and replacing them with institutions and a system that actually enables the people to build a society free of exploitation and oppression. A new world on a completely different foundation. We have a strategy for how we're working today, and also, there's a strategy for how once we do get into a different situation, we can get a thing going where we can take on all of their might, all of their oppressive power, all of their violent instruments, and actually beat them. They are not all powerful. And how inhuman they are is one of their weaknesses. It's one of the reasons we're gonna be able to beat them. In Los Angeles, this was followed by a march in formation. Revolutionary May 1st, 2021 gave a taste of what the future society could be like and the movement coming together now to make that real. Plans were announced to have a powerful impact over the next six weeks, culminating in nationwide militant demonstrations on June 12, declaring revolution nothing less. Everybody should go to that table and get one of these because today is not just a one and done and now we all go back to what we were doing and got to pep ourselves up. This is a launch pad. This is a training day and we're going forward for a year for the next six weeks to build up momentum and to actually have a much bigger impact even beyond like South Central here and in Harlem in New York and in the South Shore of Chicago, but to actually impact the whole society with the fact that there is a force right here in the belly of the beast that is getting organized and accumulating forces to prepare to bring this empire down. These celebrations ended with words we should all take to heart. This is from the book Basic, number 23. If you have had a chance to see the world as it really is, there are profoundly different roads you can take with your life. You can just get into the dog eat dog, and most likely get swallowed up by the whole by, by, by it while trying to get, get ahead in it. 
You can put your snout in the troll and try to stomp off as much as you can while scrambling desperately to get more than others. Or you can try to do something that would change the whole direction of society and the whole way the world is. When you put those things alongside each other, which one has any meaning? Which one really contributes to anything worthwhile? Your life is going to be about something or it's going to be about nothing. And there's nothing greater your life can be about than contributing whatever you can to the revolutionary transformation of society and the world, to put an end to all systems and relations of oppression and ex exploitation and all the unnecessary sufferings and destruction that goes along with them. I have learned that more and more deeply through all the twists and turns and even the great setbacks as well as the great achievements of the communist revolution so far and what are really and are what what really still is early stages this is from Bobby Bacon in the book Basics by by copy so look in closing I want to say look we're, we're heading into very heavy times, you know? And you can read and you can, and we should keep talking about what this means, right? But in the declaration, it makes the point that there's two sides, you know, and in, in, in the people in power that are, there's very sharp, you know, fight amongst them, you know, and how to rule. And we saw an expression of that on January 6th at the Capitol. And look, whether people, are paying attention to this or whether people are re beginning to lift their sights, there's no getting away from this. And there's either gonna be a revolutionary resolution to this or a reactionary resolution to this. And we're not gonna lie. You know, we're not gonna sit here and lie that there's gonna be no sacrifice. And to and what Bob Avakian was actually talking about, to live and to fight for the people and the recognition that your life can actually be about putting an end to this not to just think about yourself or to try to get by while millions of people are being grounded up in this system is a very beautiful and important thing. And I don't just wanna to speak to that side of it, I also wanna to speak to the joy of it because there is a lot of joy. And to go back to what I was saying earlier, even looking around and seeing the kinds of people that you're with, having each other's back, getting into these questions deeper, lifting our sights together to a whole different world. As Bob Avakian says, a whole different world where mothers don't have to bury their children anymore because a thug and a badge shot them and murdered them. A world where women can walk down the street and look every man in the eye and fear nothing. To women that know what it's like to walk around having to turn and look behind them every single second. Can't even begin to imagine getting to that kind of world. But that world is possible. And, and this is why we are here together, to learn more about this, to step into this, and to let other people know. You know, and the joy of seeing, you know, even earlier these people that stood here and read those points of attention for the revolution. Struggling together, looking at people actually getting a sense of those points of attention and striving to actually represent and live by those points of attention. That's a very joyous and beautiful thing. So I wanted to end with that, you know, because it's, there are a lot of challenges ahead, but then when you look at what is actually on our side, the leadership that we do have, the potential to make this revolution is a very liberating thing to have. So thank you all. Let's keep talking, let's meet each other, come to the book table, let's get organized and let's go. Let's return to and dig into a declaration, a call to get organized now for a real revolution. 
For the possibility of a real revolution depends on continually returning to, grounding ourselves in, and proceeding from this declaration. The possibility of overthrowing this monster of a system whose police hunt down the youth in the inner cities of this country, that continues to throw refugees and immigrants into camps, that degrades and assaults women, that threatens the very survival of humanity with its destruction of the environment, is only possible if each of you, if all of us, get into this declaration, get with the Revcoms, and spread the word of this revolution and this leader and contribute in any and in every way we can. Revolution to emancipate humanity cannot be made by a few. It requires you. An acute political crisis, when a real revolution becomes possible, comes but rarely. And such a situation arises not just from what the revolutionary forces do, but what is going on in the country and the world as a whole. But it is also the reality that such a situation cannot and will not lead to a real revolution without you, without masses of people, including thousands now getting into the revolution, getting into BA, and giving all we can so that at last humanity can break out of the madness of this system and get on the road to real emancipation. The Declaration begins, let's get down to basics. We need a revolution, nothing less. Who is the we who needs this revolution? Who, when I say, all of you, do I speak of? We need to go to work to change the situation where all of you is transformed to become all of us. The Declaration addresses who we are calling on to join in this great endeavor. To everyone who can't stand this world the way it is, who is sick and tired of so many people being treated as less than human, who knows that the claim of liberty and justice for all is a cruel lie, who is righteously enraged that injustice and inequality go on and on and on, despite false promises and honeyed words from people in power or those seeking power. Everyone who agonizes about where things are headed and the fact that to be young now means being denied a decent future or any future at all. Everyone who has dreamed about something much better or even wondered whether that is possible. Everyone who hungers for a world without oppression, exploitation, poverty, and the destruction of the environment. Everyone who has a heart to fight for something that is truly worth fighting for. You need to be part of this revolution. The Declaration then says, this revolution is not just a good idea, it is actually possible. Is this for real? Are we serious about this? And can we back it up? Yes. We are not here to repeat garbage that may be popular or to spread the lies we are constantly told by people in power and their mouthpieces in the media and elsewhere. We are here to bring the truth. So here are some basic truths that we need to understand and live by. Number one, the system we live under, the system of capitalism and imperialism, destroys lives and crushes spirits. It is the source of endless horrors for the majority of people in this country and all around the world. And it is increasingly threatening the very existence of humanity. The military of this country is not carrying out an honorable service. It is not some badass force that people should respect. It is doing the same thing around the world on a massive scale that the police are doing here, carrying out the cowardly killing and terrorizing of people in the service of the biggest oppressors in the world, the rulers of this country. And it is a major cause of the destruction of the environment. The Declaration goes on to state that, quote, there is a way to a world and a future that is worth living and is worth fighting for 
now, revolution, a real revolution, end quote, which it says means, quote, a force of millions drawn from many different parts of society and organized for an all-out fight to overthrow this system and replace it with a radically different and much better economic and political system, a socialist system, based on meeting the needs of the people and carrying forward the fight for a communist world where there will finally be an end everywhere to the exploitation, oppression, and destruction of the environment that is built into this system of capitalism imperialism, end quote. Earlier in this program, we saw Baba Vakian bring out that vision of a real socialism. The second point of this declaration speaks to this moment of possibility. Revolutions are not possible all the time, but are generally possible only in rare times and circumstances, especially in a powerful country like this. This is one of those rare times and circumstances. This system is in real trouble, caught up in crisis and conflicts for which it has no easy or lasting solutions. Throughout this country, the workings of this system have given rise to deep divisions which cannot be resolved under this system. Society is being ripped apart. Those who rule are locked in bitter fight among themselves and they cannot hold things together in the way that they have in the past. Although there are a lot of bad things connected with this, and it could lead to something really terrible, it is also possible that we could wrench something really positive out of all of this. Revolution, to put an end to this system and bring something much better into being, end quote. After putting forward this sharp analysis of the potential for revolution opened up by the bitter fight among those who rule over us, the Declaration goes on to discuss the positive potential that we saw from among the people during this past year. We have seen the potential for revolution powerfully demonstrated just last summer when millions of people of all races and genders all over this country and all around the world rose up together against racist oppression and police murder. We have seen this potential and the outpourings of women in every country in the world refusing to put up with being abused and degraded. This potential is also revealed and the deep distress being expressed by scientists and millions of ordinary people about the continually worsening climate crisis and the threat this poses to the future of humanity, a crisis this system cannot solve, but can only make worse. But with all this, right now, only a small number of us have recognized the need for this revolution and are acting to make it happen. So there is crucial work that must be done now to win people, to understand the need for revolution, and act to make it real. To turn the potential for revolution into a powerful movement and organized force for an actual revolution. To lead all this to a revolution is, if you think about it for even just a moment, a complex undertaking that requires far-sighted and scientific leadership. That we have such leadership now is a tremendous thing. The Declaration. Number three, to make this revolution a reality, we need leadership with the scientific method the strategy and program that can shine a light through the madness and chaos that this system is constantly creating and can lead in carving a path forward out of this madness to the radically new world we need. And we have that leadership in Bob Avakian, B.A. B.A. is the architect of a whole new framework for the liberation of all oppressed people and the emancipation of all humanity, the new communism. We are followers of BA and you need to follow BA too. There has never been a leader like this in this country and there is no other leader like this in the world now. We cannot afford not to follow this leadership 
if we ever want to get free and put an end to this madness. So how do we go to work on organizing for, preparing for revolution right now? The Declaration concentrates very crucial guidance for this. Point four begins with this. Number four. We need to urgently change this situation where not nearly enough people know about this revolution and are with it. We need to get this revolution and its leadership known everywhere. We need to challenge and struggle with people right around us and all over the country to do something that, yes, requires real heart and will make a positive difference for real. Become part of this revolution and follow this revolutionary leadership. We need to organize more and more people into the ranks of the revolution. Organizing people into this revolution means reaching out to all sorts of people, not just where there are protests and rebellions against oppression and injustice, but everywhere throughout society. Spreading the word about revolution and getting people together in real life and online to grapple with why an actual revolution is necessary, what such a revolution involves, and what kind of society this is aiming for. This will enable people who are new to the revolution to themselves become organizers for this revolution and to recruit more and more people to do the same. On this basis, and through the growing ranks of the revolution acting together as an increasingly powerful force, it will become possible to attract and organize the necessary numbers and build up the necessary strength to be in position to do what needs to be done. I want to read the next paragraphs of Part 4 carefully so that we take them in, reflect on them, and really use them as a guide in organizing for revolution over the next six weeks. The Declaration continues, We need to struggle hard with people to take up the orientation and strategy, the values and goals of this revolution, and dedicate themselves to working for this revolution. While we unite growing numbers to fight the abuse, brutality, and destruction perpetrated by this system, and through all this get thousands and then millions of people prepared and steeled to do away with this system that brings so much hell to the people. We need to wield this growing revolutionary force to stand up to this system and its murderous enforces and to change the whole terrain the political, social, and cultural situation and atmosphere throughout society in order to weaken the hold of this system over people, win people away from acting to strengthen and enforce this system, and create the best possible conditions for this revolution to succeed. To come back to basics, we need revolution, a real revolution. We cannot afford to waste these rare times and circumstances that could be ripened into a real chance to make revolution. We cannot afford to squander the rare and precious leadership we have for this revolution. We have to get busy, build a movement and the organized forces for revolution all over the country, and work together tirelessly for this revolution to actively prepare for the situation where the system can be brought down and something much better be brought into being. This is serious and profound direction for how to organize now for a real revolution. I'm going to read some of this again to help us see the different parts of this, how they relate to each other, and how as a whole it orients and directs us to make the necessary advances now. We need to grasp deeply and to work on the reality that, quote, times and circumstances that could be ripened into a real chance, end quote, depends on you stepping into the revolution now, bringing others with you, recruiting them, struggling hard with them to take up what? The orientation and strategy, the values and goals for this revolution, and dedicate themselves to working for this revolution. And this includes bringing to people the leadership we have for this revolution in Baba Vakian. And what do we need to be doing as an integral part of this struggle? At the same time, and as part of struggling with people over these points of ideology, we need to unite growing numbers to fight the abuse, brutality, destruction perpetrated by the system, 
and through all this get thousands and then millions of people prepared and steeled to do away with this system that brings so much hell to the people. The next six weeks from now through June 12th must be a crucial time when organizing and wielding a new growing revolutionary force makes a real qualitative leap precisely in this overall process. Winning more and more people to take up the strategy and goals of the revolution, to work together, to get deeper into BA, and to join and strengthen the revolution club in cities where they exist, or to start uniting people to form one where they don't exist. Go to revcom.us to the revolution club section to learn about these clubs. Here in Los Angeles, as well as around the country, on June 12th, six weeks from now, we are going to take to the streets and put before the world a growing revolutionary force that is standing up to this system and its murderous enforces, preparing for the time when we could do away with this system that brings so much hell to the people. On June 12th, we will take to the streets to declare to one and all that we are organizing now for revolution, nothing less. We will go straight to a hated symbol of the system and its murderous enforces with revolutionary spirit, with discipline, and big arms to embrace all who want to join us. Manifesting in this way, coming strong, can be an important next step in weakening the hold of this system over people, winning people away from acting to strengthen and enforce this system, and contributing to creating the best possible conditions for this revolution to succeed. The longer version of this declaration concludes with this. To come back once more to basics, we need a revolution, a real revolution. And this revolution is possible. To everyone who hungers for an end to oppression and injustice, and everyone who has the heart to fight for something that is really worth fighting for, you need to get into this revolution. Become a part of the organized forces for this revolution and work tirelessly for this revolution so that we can have a real chance to win. Part of getting organized for revolution, building the networks of support for this revolution, and being able to make the big advances we need to make in this period is donating and raising funds to support this movement for revolution. So here we want to go to two pieces. One is an excerpt that we played for you a couple of weeks ago from Dr. Phil Rice talking about the importance of raising funds in this period. And we'll follow that with an excerpt of Annie Day's presentation at the May Day celebrations here in Los Angeles, talking about the importance of this and a particular focus and push in fundraising from May 10th to the 17th. And then we'll build on that going forward. Hi, my name is Phil Rice, and I, like you, yearn for a better world, and I'm ready to fight to bring that world into being. The Declaration is a call to action, but not just any call to action, but a call to get into the revolution and get organized now for a real revolution. We are going to boldly take this declaration to all those who yearn for a better world, but we must just as boldly struggle with everyone to fund this revolution. Simply put, we can't go to where we want to go without raising the funds needed to get there. We can't get to where this time in history demands that we go if we intend to emancipate humanity without the needed funds to get there. Asking for donations and ongoing donations is a key part of revolution and bringing this declaration to fruition and life. Fundraising has to be part of how we bring people into organizing for a real revolution. And those that we bring forward as part of organizing for a real revolution need to embed this understanding and practice as they bring forward others. To not do this, to not have this as our standard practice implies that we're not serious and not up to the task at hand because people understand that you can't do something as momentous as this without funding. We have to fundraise commensurate with the seriousness of this moment as we take out the declaration. We must fundraise 
in the course of bringing people forward and building the movement. The whole world is watching and is hopeful. So let's get with it and make fundraising a key part of organizing and bringing people forward for revolution. Making a financial contribution to the revolution, raising funds for the revolution is actually a large part of how we get organized for revolution. The networks of support that we have to build, if you use your imagination and you think about what's going to be required for an actual overthrow, you can understand and start to recognize why those networks of support are absolutely vital. We're going to have buckets that are going to start going around right now. And I want people to dig deep. There's a sign right there that tells you how you can give. You can give on Venmo, you can give on Cash App, you can write an old-fashioned check, you can do it to RCP Publications and put Revolution Tour in the memo line. Whether you can give $5,000 or whether you can give $5, you're stepping in and you're part of something bigger than yourself. May 10th to May 17th, we're doing a week of fundraising. We're gonna build up the organization to, to, to raise the funds needed for this revolution. These funds go to, if, if the Revcoms came to your neighborhood, we had to put gas in the car that drove us there. If the Revcoms came to your neighborhood and gave you a flyer for May 1st, that flyer costs funds. And there's no saviors for this revolution. We're not funded by this system. We're funded by each other, by ourselves. So this is about taking responsibility for the revolution. And if you want to see a different world, you're responsible for making it happen. And you're responsible for contributing funds to make that happen. And to going out and boldly raising funds from other, cause others. Because there's no more important thing people could give to than the hope and the reality for a whole different and far better world. So that brings us to the end of episode 51 of the RNL, the Revolution Nothing Less show, bringing you the importance of a declaration, a call to get organized now for a real revolution from the Revcoms, and the importance of the leadership we have in Bob Avakian, and bringing you the story of May 1st, 2021, here in Los Angeles and around the country. So Andy, any closing words? I think this was a really important episode, getting deeply into the declaration, a call uh, and, and how we can get organized now for a, a real revolution. And in the story of May 1st, so we have uh, six weeks in front of us. We're going to really get out there with the goals of this revolution, what it's all about, the leadership we have. And on June 12th, we're going to uh, take to the streets here and around the country to really manifest that we are building a movement for, re for revolution and we're growing but before we close this episode, Sansara, I want to just uh, speak to something from the last episode that we did, episode number 50. We did an interview with Joe Ergo, who was a, uh, one of the, part of the steering committee of Vietnam Veterans Against the War, uh, who organized a demonstration 50 years ago, two weeks ago, uh, called Dewey Canyon 3, where 900 veterans threw their medals back at the Congress for the crimes that this country was committing and, and repudiating the service they had done to this country for this country against the people of the world, the people of Vietnam in particular. But in basic training, the training of the soldiers to go to Vietnam in different branches, they, uh, as they were learning to march, learning to run, they would sing cadences that had just the most horrific, horrific uh, uh, words to them about raping and maiming and killing and uh, dehumanizing, calling uh, the Vietnamese people racist names and misogynist, uh, against the women. Uh, but one of the Jodies that Joe uh, spoke about was called uh, Napalm Sticks to Kids. Uh, the lyrics are quite horrific. Napalm sticks to kids. We shoot the sick, the young, the lame. We do our best to maim because all the kills count the same. Napalm sticks to kids. This is horrific. But I got a couple of letters from people, from a few different people, and I ran into people who said, boy, that didn't sound like something that the Navy uh, and the Army would actually do. Well, here's a real story about this uh, uh, that we had checked into. This uh, song and what you heard was produced by a group of anti-war GIs who recorded a couple of anti-war albums, uh, the Covered Wagon Musicians, and this was a song, Napon Sticks to Kids, that they did as a it, biting satire. However, here's the rub. It got taught in all the uh, military academies, and in fact, it did get used by the military as Jody's in basic training. 
including, as I understand it, and from what people wrote in, in the Naval Academy for several years till it was stopped in the, sometime in the 1970s. So we did go ahead and put it in the episode, even as what you heard was actually an anti-war song. But this uh, particular segment bears watching again and, and spreading it, particularly in the schools and to young people who are just inundated with, uh, you know, this is your job opportunity, thank you for your service, and all this kind of bullshit that just perpetuates and reinforces what this country does around the world. So with that, Sansara, we have finished episode number 51 and um, May 1st, and we're on our way for six weeks to June 12th to a very powerful expression of the growing movement for a real revolution. So good night for the Revolution Nothing Less show.